Hello, everybody, and welcome back. My name is Bogdan Chakone, and I'm Product Delivery Community Lead here at Cognizant Soul Vision, and you are attending the seventh edition of Programmers Week. This year at Programmers Week, we aim to go beyond and offer you experiences to remember by pushing the limits of technology and innovation. For our next talk, my colleague Marius will talk about uh, learning to say yes and the power of delegating. Marius has 15 years of IT experience and has been with Cognizance of Vision for 10 years. Marius has been a manager since 2013 and he leads a double life now. As a delivery manager, he has a long standing relationship with one of our biggest clients, managing 90 people, um, 90, not 19, uh, in Romania and US. And he is also global program manager of Game of Codes, one of our newest platforms. Uh, where he oversees engineers and managers in Romania, US, Ukraine, and Argentina. Marius, take it away, please. Thank you, Bogdan. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us for Programmers Week 2021. And thank you for joining me for this talk. My name is Marius, um, and I have to delegate. Probably you need to delegate more, too. And I want to help you do that as efficiently as possible. And if you are the delegatee, you're also in the right, right place. Here's a quote uh, I live by. Surround yourself with the best people you can find. Delegate authority and don't interfere as long as the policy you've decided upon is being carried out. There's one key thing here. You can't delegate and then just disappear. I will get into more details later on. So who am I and why am I here? Like I said, I'm here because I have to delegate. My group of people grew in the past years from 20 to 50, then 100 people. And I recently picked at about uh, 150 people. I'm a delivery manager in, in content subvision. That means that client relationships, our team's deliverables, and the well being of my teams are my main responsibilities. So let's go. How many people do you have in your group? And while you think about that, let me give you some context. In the US Army, uh, the lieutenant, which is the entry level rank, rank for uh, most commissions officers, leads platoon sized elements. And he already has 16 to 44 people under his command. Again, that's just the entry level. A more seasoned lieutenant with two years of, a ser of service can have up to 140 personnel under his command. The captain commands and controls company sized units up to 190 soldiers. And the colonel commands battalions up to brigade units, and those can have 5,000 soldiers. And then generals typically lead 10,000 to 45,000 soldiers. But you get the idea. How many people do you have in your group? And think about it. Could you lead a much bigger group? So how do they do it? Obviously, they have structure, reporting, control mechanisms and the chain of command that helps them manage and lead at each level. And they delegate. They do so clearly, intentionally, with little room, room for miscommunication or misunderstandings. So let's move into a more typical office with Delbert. When he's put in charge of a project, the manager says he, the manager, not Delbert, will control the budget and the team. And he has a plan in his head, and he's not sharing it. But if the project goes south, of course, Dilbert is in charge of the project, so Dilbert would get the blame. Does this sound familiar? Of course, this is exaggerated, but it's funny because it's partially true. We have to do much, much better than this. And learning to say no is important and sometimes crucial, but I'm here to advocate for saying yes. And it's also a catchy name for a presentation, so, or so I hoped. A dear friend came up with this name and I just ran with it. So thank you, Stefan. So who are you and why are you here? Someone, usually a superior, uh, will need you. They probably already did need you in the past or uh, maybe, and maybe you said yes to the challenge. Maybe you said no. You should still weigh your opportunities, opportunities really carefully, uh, but start with the yes mindset. If someone needs you, you should seize the, those opportunities. If you want to grow, that is. Don't miss that moment when they need you. They may put more on your plate, and your plate may already be pretty full. But if they are delegating something to you, you may be the, best, the one best suited for that work. 
because you're, you're probably here because you're somewhere in the middle. Managers are delegating to you. You're also delegating to others. So if you are the delegatee, you should be here. And I think you should be saying yes more often. And if you are the one doing the delegating, you should definitely be here. And let me tell you why. There are a lot of administrative tasks, operational details that you go through each day. But if you are here with me, then those tasks are not your primary functions and they should not be your main focus. Your ability to get good results through others, uh, to delegate and to supervise efficiently will determine your success as a manager. And the most productive managers are those who know how to delegate. Delegation is one of the most crucial skills you will ever learn as a manager. And unfortunately, it's also one of the least understood and least mastered skills. So you want to be productive while delegating. You have to be a good communicator first and foremost. You have to make sure that your employees understand the task and how to perform it. Effective communicators take into consideration uh, the complexity of the communication and they are cognizant of its effects. They are active listeners. They use empathy and they confirm the understanding of the other party. And communication is complex. Um, speaking with others is, is a process most of us never even think about. However, when we break it down, we realize how complicated it really is if the communication occurs in person. We must also add in the complexity of nonverbal and paraverbal communication when we speak to someone face to face. Communication skills are exactly what they sound like. They have the skills required to effectively communicate your ideas, your instructions, questions over the years. And those who rise the farthest up the chain of command also, and do so the fastest, they are the top notch communicators. Becoming an effective communicator involves skills that go far beyond just making sure that the words and symbols you use match the ideas you wish to express. Uh, they involve understanding your own nonverbal communication, the nonverbal communication of others, creating an effective communication environment, being an effective listener, and having skills that involve confirming that communication has genuinely taken place. The more we understand about the process of communication and how miscommunication occurs, the more effective we can be as people, as employees, as managers, and as delegates. To be an effective delegator, you must, to some extent, also be an effective teacher. Very often, the delegated tasks require some level of instruction in order for the employee to perform effectively. And the motivation to learn and accomplish plays a key part in delegation success. Unlike the way a child learns, an adult must feel motivated to learn in order to retain information. And there are different learning stages that an adult goes through. The first stage, unconscious in, in his confidence, simply means that someone is unaware of what it is they do not, do not know. The second stage, conscious incompetence, is when a person has progressed to at least being aware of what it is they do not know. Third stage, the conscious competence, an individual has learned the knowledge or skill that he or she was lacking. However, he has not transferred it to his permanent long-term memory. Essentially, the individual still must think about how to perform the skill or how to apply the knowledge. And the fourth and final stage is unconscious competence. Simply stated, the skill has become a habit. It's important to note that if you're an unconscious incompetent, that's not on the list there, not only are you lacking in a particular skill and knowledge, but you don't even recognize its value or benefit. So you have no motivation whatsoever for acquiring that skill or knowledge. We can see that kind of thinking and behavior in, in, in fairly regular basis. We often call it tunnel vision or, or ignorance. But as a manager, it is important that you keep this model in mind as you develop your, your staff. If you can identify the stages with your employees, then you'll be able to develop their skills faster and more efficiently. And you can reduce the frustration level felt at any time Adults are required to learn new things. So delegating is, is key yeah, in your growth as well as the development of your staff. We mentioned communicator, uh, teacher, but you must also be an effective leader and planner. Effective delegation saves time. It helps you develop the people in your group and, and motivate them and allows you to groom a successor, but you have to do this properly. And if you delegate ineffectively, you can, you can cause frustration, you can demotivate, you can confuse people, and even go so far as not accomplishing the initial task. 
I'm just going to pause here for, for questions, reactions, on, and, and the sip of water. If you have any questions, now now's a good time. If not, we can move forward. forward. And now let's, let's go through the delegation phases before you delegate. So don't delegate while you are still brainstorming yourself. Don't, don't confuse your employees. Know what you want before you delegate it and write it down. First, delegate smaller, uh, low-risk tasks to build trust and confidence. Don't delegate sensitive things like hiring, firing, or escalations that are your responsibility. Don't delegate tasks that your manager asks you to do or activities that require access to confidential information. Also at this stage, you have to know who you want to delegate to. Different people will be better at different things, of course. Um, know their workload to determine if an employee has the bandwidth. And don't overthink things, but pay attention and adjust later if needed. Some employees are more motivated to move to the next level. So you have to give them opportunities. If you don't know who they are in the, be in, in the, in the beginning, you can just ask for volunteers. A common delegation error is when managers assume that because they find a particular task easy, others know how to do it as well. Everyone has different ability levels and experience, so don't assume that because you find that a, a particular task simple or obvious that everyone else will too. Always, always take the time and patience to ensure that employees have an adequate understanding of how to perform a task and all of its elements. Why do you delegate? So don't, don't uh, just send an email, set up a meeting and explain the task, go slow, be 100% clear and don't make any assumptions. You can even show a sample of what you're looking for. You have to confirm that the employee fully understands the task before they start working on it. Does this make sense? Should I repeat? Allow the employee to clarify expectations, allow them to ask questions and focus on what, not how. Employees should own the task and focus on what's in it for them. Clarify any, any confusion and confirm commitment with questions like, do you have any concerns? Set expectations about the process you will follow. You, you will give them positive feedback and also feedback about things that they can improve, but give them the permission to make mistakes and readjust. On the timeline side, be specific on, on deadlines and be realistic about them. You can even set a soft deadline in the beginning and, and check, check upon it later, but be upfront about, the, about that. Schedule checkpoints, checkpoints to check in and start with more of them in the beginning, then, then uh, uh, more, more, fewer of them. And a common mistake is when, is when a manager has set unrealistic deadlines. Very often, managers fail to take into account the employees' regular, regular workload when setting the time frame. The consequence is that the task is either delivered late or rushed with employees sacrificing quality for the sake of, of speed. And you have to set clear limits. Authority limits can be subject, subjective and sometimes ambiguous. So that's just because you don't know what you don't know already, right? In order for an employee to complete a delegated task, they will likely require information or cooperation from another employee or department. So you have to communicate to the other employees and departments that a certain person has the authority to collect certain information or needs their cooperation. And when you convey the employee's authority to others, be sure to communicate the importance and relevance of that task. You also have to define a guidance process each time you delegate. So that's very important because before coming back to you, um, your employees should think through potential options. They should come up with a recommendation themselves and be able to explain why that recommendation is best. And finally, document everything. Don't rely on verbal requests because people tend to forget details. The documentation also gives you a reference point to go back and, uh, and to review. And as much as possible, use a template. That saves time and you can also use it as a checklist. The format doesn't, doesn't really matter much. At this stage, I wanna emphasize that you should follow up on everything. And I mean everything, your actions, the action items that you set for others, follow up on commitments others, others take to, towards you. Otherwise you can't really hold them accountable or it might be too late if it's at the end of the timeline, especially for an important task. You can't recover easily from that. 
And if you don't hold them accountable, well, all you're delegating doesn't amount to anything since you will probably end up doing it yourself and don't do that. Follow up and teach others to follow up too. Tell them your expectations and coach them. So you've delegated and after that, you have to check in, especially in the early stages. You have to pay full attention, avoid micromanaging. And this is an interesting thing uh, to balance. If, uh, and if there's a lack of skill set, coach them or provide additional training. You have to reinforce good results and be specific about your feedback. You, you have to give details about what can be improved. Allow for mistakes and be patient and help them solve a problem, but don't solve it for them. You can, you can ask them, how do you think we can solve this? How, how do we avoid this from happening again? Remember, this is a process and you're interested in long-term rewards. Uh, some common mistakes here. Um, if you don't have a before, during, and after delegation process, don't complain about your, your subordinates. Uh, one of the most common is it's faster and easier if I just do it myself. But managers who opt for the easy way by doing the work themselves and not delegating are actually hurting their employees as well as themselves. I mentioned micromanagement before. Uh, so it's evil. It holds you back. It limits you and those around you. And it creates bad habits and spawns more evil in the future, since others will do it too. But evil is sometimes necessary. And as a great man said to me the other day, micromanagement is not done. It's asked for. So it should be done to some extent at first until things are under control. I think this is something that you need to balance out on your own, uh, with your own group, because it also depends on your style of leadership and the image you want to have and the image you want to project around you. Just remember that too much of it, and you won't be able to scale up. Too little of it, and you might feel out of control. The way I deal with grow, a growing group is through impeccable agreements, which is a fancier way of saying that something is well-defined and properly tracked. It has a clear description, a precise goal, and has a specific due date. And also, a task should have a single owner, since tasks owned by multiple people are owned by nobody. So when you say something, either you follow through with it or you come back and you renegotiate it. But I want to re explicitly negotiate it so that I know what's changed. This is something that only works after a certain level when, when your group is mature enough and they know you, you have a proper pro process that you've been following for a, for a while now. This means you're not checking on everyone as often as you probably should because you're gonna count on your team that if someone, some circumstances change, and they will, they are gonna come back to you and tell you. Uh, there are chapters in management books about this, but I found out about it from an article about Lynn Jurek. I hope I, I pronounced her name, her name correct. So look it up if, if you're interested in more. Delegation is effective when leading to change. Um, it empowers others to bring about change. And that may sound a little odd, but you're, if you're giving your employee a role to play in the change, they're playing a part in it. So they're not a victim of the change. When people feel that they have some control over what's going on in their lives, they are less likely to resist it. A second key reason for delegating tasks during time of change is that you're granting the employees some degree of ownership over the change. That sense of ownership helps them embrace the change rather than resist it. Um, delegating large projects is an interesting one. So the bigger the task, the more complicated it can become, but ultimately the recipe is similar and communication is still the key. You break everything down into smaller tasks, you delegate those, but you should keep focused on the bigger picture and also manage dependencies. Also be mindful of the timeline. In the formula you see, O is the most optimistic case. That's how long you think the task will take if everything goes perfectly. P is the pessimistic case when everything goes wrong. And M is the most likely case, the time you think it will take if the normal degree of problems are encountered. I don't think that's easy to estimate, uh, by the way. The resulting per estimate is calculated as a weight average, since the most likely estimate is weighed four times as much as the other two values. The final estimate is moved slightly forward uh, toward the, uh, either the optimistic or the pessimistic value, depending on which one is the furthest from the most likely. It won't be by much though. This is again, interesting one, delegating to your boss because delegation can also go upwards. 
when you find yourself doing something that's maybe outside your authority level and really spending hours and hours and hours without really making much movement on a project or on a task, uh, when your boss could really move that along quicker. So you can go to him and say, or her and say, I need your help because you have contact with the boss above or the manager above that manager with a larger, let's say organizational hierarchy to make something move forward or get done. We can say, I've done everything I can, but we, I need some help going forward or I need your expertise or something. Maybe you've got a great relationship with the client, but you need your boss to come in and help close the sale or give a different perspective as far as the wider organizational perspective for the client. So they can trust you as an organization, even though they may trust you as an individual. But be aware when this comes back up towards you, it's the matter of that person delegating back to you. Sometimes you need to push back and if uh, avoid reverse delegation. For example, when an employee uh, runs into a problem, that was their responsibility to solve. They may come back to you to solve it. So you need to push a bit, encourage them to think problems through by themselves. It's also a learning opportunity. If you say, leave it with me, you will soon have a lot of monkeys on your shoulders. If you're not familiar with the saying, just look for who's got the monkey. And you should trust, but also verify. This is very important. Always check with your employees that they are comfortable with your decision. But people are generally capable of doing far more than you imagine. Just remember that good delegation takes time, a lot of effort, intent, and follow through. Take care of your people, be patient, and know what you want to achieve. And you have to commit yourself to develop future leaders. If you help them grow, you will grow as well, and the organization through you. So everyone has different control mechanisms in their reporting structure, but it's important to have that control. Always look ahead and prepare your employees, help them grow before you delegate to them. See what kind of tasks you can delegate and who has the most adequate skills required for a particular task. You need to offer visibility. So over communicating or spamming information might work sometimes, but you need to adapt to changing, to changing circuit tests. You also need to have visibility yourself. And this can be seen as micromanaging to some extent, but if you're generally interested in everyone's progress and you step in when your assistance is necessary, they will keep providing you with invaluable feedback and information that would be very hard to obtain otherwise. Set up regular meetings and keep to them. You do that with clients. Uh, more often than not, but do that with your teams too and meet in person as much as possible. In these times, use web cameras for, in online meetings. That's, that's an obvious one. You have already or you will make mistakes like making false assumptions, failing to communicate all, all your expectations. You will forget to communicate to, with all the involved parties and your employees will also make mistakes. Some of your employees will even be resistant to performing a delegated task. So listen to them. Maybe they have never performed that task before or they are unsure, break it down for them. If they feel they have too much on their plate, again, listen to them. Maybe they can be more efficient with their time or maybe they are truly close to the limit. Adjust their expectations or of completion date, priority, or even choice of an individual you, to whom you've delegated the task and be clear and specific from the beginning and have a process. As you, as you master the art of delegating, you will find yourself in the happy situation in which you, your delegatee will also become the delegator. If you do this right, your team will grow. Uh, new people, they, they won't magically know what you already taught your more senior employees. So you have two options. You teach them yourself, those new employees, or you delegate authority and responsibility to the ones that are ready to grow the next generation. And then your group will have hundreds and then possibly thousands of people. So I want to leave you with the same quote I started with so we can have a nice full circle. Uh, if you have any questions, now is the time. Also, note, please note the QR code in the lower right corner. That's a feedback form. So there are a few questions, uh, Marius. Um, first one would be, how do you pitch managers to do more delegation? So managers should naturally want to grow their group. 
you if you don't delegate you just limit yourself that's if you don't want to grow that's fine i mean if you want to stay within a certain um, level that's fine but if you want to grow you don't have any real, real choice you'll you'll find it out the hard way but you'll have to delegate maybe you do it inefficiently at first or you don't know the rules and then you start to um, look for courses uh, books or or um, webinars such as this and and try to make it better but you have you will do it at some point Another question is, uh, is there something you wouldn't want to delegate at all, even if you trust your delegate 100%? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So like I said, there are tasks that you cannot delegate, especially the sensitive ones, like um, hiring in your own group, firing people. You don't, you don't delegate the, the difficult tasks because you don't want to do it. You, you, you have to do some, some things that you cannot delegate. The other ones you can you can teach your your staff, but the sensitive topics you you can do you can delegate them, and especially if they require access to some information that you want, only you have, you you don't want to go that road. So definitely you don't want to delegate everything, and especially if your boss gives you a certain task that only you are um, are uh, capable of doing, or he trusts you, then don't delegate that uh, further up, up, so or down the chain. Um, the last question we have, uh, what is the best motivator you use to the delegatee before delegating anything to him? Um, I usually look for people that are already motivated uh, to do that, or they just need a, um, a nudge, because natural leaders that I mentioned during the, the, the presentation are inclined to take more. So in my experience, I, I have to be careful of not delegating too much to those people because they tend to take too much on their shoulders. They're usually top performers, so they tend to take a lot. Uh, so in my experience, it's, I'm not looking for, for people I want to delegate to. I'm actually, I, I identify those natural leaders and then I make sure or I help them not, not take too much load on, on their shoulders. So you are looking for people that are already self-motivated. You don't need to motivate them. Yes, and like because you don't, you don't want it's, to, it's hard to convince someone to, to, to want to grow. That's something yeah. that comes from inside. Uh, you, can, you can maybe open their eyes a bit and say you're capable of more, but you can't push people into that direction. And uh, regarding people that uh, do not know how to say no, and they uh, they take uh, too much, as you said uh, said before, um, do you watch closely to see if they are already falling to to the towards burnout, or how do you measure um, if they can take further tasks from you? So you you have to 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 keep really close with all the people you delegate to, and have regular meetings with them that I I also mentioned, um, and you want to check in fairly regularly because in, in the beginning they we, they might feel overwhelmed or might feel some pressure. Some of that pressure may be self-inflicted or might be real, but you want to check in as, as often as possible. So having weekly meetings, bi-weekly meetings, whatever works, just be close to, the, to, your, uh, to your people because otherwise uh, they will go through some pains that uh, you want to avoid. One more question popped up. Um, how do you avoid micromanagement when assigned a delegated task? So the micromanaging, I think, is the most difficult uh, thing to balance out. And it's, it, there's, not a, there's not a recipe for success for micromanaging. Sometimes you will need to be uh, in the front lines yourself uh, and actually know what's going on step by step with some things you delegated, and that might be seen as micromanaging. But if you don't know details or enough details that you can help your, your, your people, then you're too far away from them. So that's that's also bad. Um, like I said, this is, this is something that you need to balance out on your own um, because you might be on a project that requires a lot of attention at first, and then you can step back a bit. But you might be on a project that's so large that you, if you, if you try and micromanage, then you're, you're already failing because you can't be in that many places at once. So I think the structure you create um, within your group, that's the most important. And everyone should know your expectations and you should grow 
gradually if you're if you step into a position and you're given a lot of people out of, uh, out of nowhere then you have to take it gradually and just uh, do deep dives where, where you need to otherwise uh, rely on your on your managers on your leaders and uh, and coach them great these are all the questions marius thank you very much for your presentation Okay, and thank you for joining me. And I hope to see you in one of our next talks. Uh, we have some interesting ones, including one about Game of Pods later on in the day uh, with leaders from Cognizant Subvision and even the CEO of Cognizant. So thank you again for your presence and the use that feedback form so we can be even better next year. Have a great day, everyone. Stay safe. Bye.